You're listening to Movie Sucktastic. <laughs> This time, would you okay? Would you all right? So let's use words instead of fist to fight. Now you're as cool as cool as cool can be, but you're still only half as cool as me. like some bad movie. Ha <laughs> ha! Hello! Hey, sir. Uh, hello. How you doing? Oh, I'm... Uh... Oh, hi, Scott. Oh, oh, hi, Joy. I just feel like rapping today, that's all. Uh... This is, um, I, I said two episodes ago that Breakin' was one of the worst films we've ever reviewed. This is one of the worst films we've ever reviewed. Now, now, the film that Joey's talking about, of course, is the 1985 hit Rappin'. Yeah, when I say hit, hit right. I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, now, Joey, J- Joey was confused, and, and this was the film that he thought was the second sequel to uh break in which is true it's not it's not really a sequel though it's more of a trilogy there's a difference y- well yes in order is... for in order for it to be a sequel it has to have some reference point to the previous films this does not it has the same theme it's got the same director from break in that's kind of yeah, it that's it so just like time bandits brazil and uh, Baron Munchausen is considered a trilogy of sorts. They're not really sequels of one another. Right. Now, I never so. said that it was definitely a sequel. I said no, that no, I remember you reading de- that. You, you said there definitely was a sequel, and I remember saying, well, just because you read it doesn't mean it's true. <laughs> no, I said I definitely remember reading that there was suppo- a supposed right. sequel. And That's I kept all. telling you there was no such thing. Well, I'm kind of right. No, you're I'm, not. I'm right it's that I read it. It says it right here. It says Rappin, a 1985 film you directed by Joel Silberg. The yeah. film it actually says the film is a spiritual sequel for Breakin' Two, that, and it's okay. also known as Breakdance Three: Electric Boogaloo. Where? Where is it known? That? <laughs> it's right on the wiki page. Yeah. All right. Where does? Where is it known that? Known as that? Uh, as a matter of fact, the breakdance titles for the films those were the Europe European. They use that for Europe a lot. Okay. So. Uh, IMDb has alternate, uh, you know, AKA also known as, and yeah. nowhere is it listed as Breaking Three Electric, Electric Boogaloo. Boogaloo. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I don't care what Joel Silberg might have said, he, it's not a sequel. Listen. All I'm it's saying not, is, it's and, not. And why? Why are we getting into this? I, it's because it's not a sequel. There is I just no said, sequel. I just, too. I was just hammering home that I yeah that you were wrong. And anyone that listens to episode one forty six, last week's episode, it, blow me. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, was that I, I could have? I don't I, think it's that big of a deal. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm not wrong. I'm saying that in last week's episode, I just couldn't get over that. I I knew I read somewhere that there was. Right. So, a, a sequel to break uh, in the Breakin' series. That's and and it. I kept telling you there was no such thing. Well, the fact that I, I found I what I read, this is actually something totally different. The wiki page, the other article that I posted, also says the same thing. So Great. the fact it's not true. <laughs> the fact that I found it means that I'm not crazy. I'm not saying no, I'm not, not. I never not claimed crazy. that there was a sequel. I just claimed that I read somewhere that I there know. was. Why are we still talking about this? I don't know. You're not crazy. You were just wrong because you were misinformed. It's not your fault. Okay. And and let me just I want to make a comparison. Joel Silberg can say this is a sequel that uh, this was a sequel to Rapping and Rap uh Breaking and Breaking 2. Uh-huh. Uh and um 
they could also say that uh, fuck, and the names just float from my head. Uh, Mario. They could say that Prometheus was not a prequel to Alien. That's fine. You can say that all you want. It's a fucking Alien movie. Yes, it was. So that that's my you know you can they can say whatever the fuck they want to say. Uh, you know, like Quentin Tarantino and Glorious Bastards. Oh, I was just doing an artistic flourish. No, you're avoiding getting banned out of some newspapers for advertising. But you can't admit that because you're a fucking whore. A, a talented whore, but a whore. So, <laughs> well, yes. Yeah. So Joe Silberg, in, in in what you know, whatever uh, reminiscence he ha- you know, fond memories he has of uh, making exploitation films in the '80s, he can call it whatever the fuck he wants to, but it's not a sequel. You've mentioned that several times. I've agreed yeah, with you several just, times. Just only because I was right. That's all. <laughs> well, I guess I correct you enough. So, likewise. i correct you more than you correct me maybe but my corrections are better sometimes they definitely are i'll give you that i'll give you that yours yours are more noteworthy i fuck up i fuck up names and dates how hard is that to correct it's pretty hard (laughs) obviously you don't know them so it must not be that easy you froze up again just like last week you downloading porn again? Huh? Oh, there's a nice disconnect right there. We will wait for Scott to reconnect. All right, so this is the 1985 film wrapping. Scott challenged this to me. Uh, I really, I'm just say, I'm saying it now. Our, um, all right, you know, I can't concentrate with him clicking over here. I apologize in advance to the noise. Hello, Cox, fucker, mother. Hello. What'd you do? Nothing. I it, it just dropped. I didn't hang up on you. Promise. Okay. I, I was <laughs> I was trying to actually talk on my own about rapping, but I'm seeing you in the corner going bloop 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 bloop. Fucking it's just distracting me. Fucking. <laughs> anyway, I, I what I was I think... saying while you were gone mm-hmm. was that uh, you. You would, cha- yes, you're here now. That you would challenge this to me, and my challenge is just—it's nowhere near this genre. I'm done with the rapping. I'm done with the dancing. I'm done with the singing. Done. Let, let me just say that when when we get to your challenge to me, yeah. I have one specific challenge in mind that I'm hoping you're challenging me, and if you don't, I'll be disappointed. Uh. That, that's a lot to live up to because I'm only it is. I was only thinking of one film that I wanted to challenge you and it's a film that I think we need to review maybe you can squash my challenge it's up to you if no no I f- I'm not saying I'll squash your challenge I'm just saying like no if like, I feel that your like I, suggestion that you'll be disappointed to that I no, don't no, challenge no. you to is better I'll go with I, it I'm not bringing it up that way all, I, all, I, all I'm saying it's is how, that how watching this is like if this was if I was doing the challenge Hundred percent. I have one choice. That's it. Does it involve so, a uh, the theme of a, uh, a, actually, a hero getting out of jail and coming home? Actually, uh, it was linked by a character, uh, an actor. Oh, so is mine. So maybe we are. We on might. The same, oh, oh, oh. We might be on Can't the same wait. wavelength. <laughs> we po- we usually we tend to be. Now, yes. um, it's the whole reason we have a podcast, sir. Now, now. <laughs> Now, uh, this, uh, to recap, for anybody that's tuning in for the first time, I don't know why you'd start here. Uh, we just reviewed uh, Breakin and Breakin 2, Electric Boogaloo. Mm-hmm. And uh, my challenge, in keeping with the theme, and apparently the trilogy, was the film Rappin', which came out 90, in 85. Same yeah, director. Following, following year. Uh, same uh Was same only the same director from the first film. There was a completely different director for uh, B- uh, Boogaloo. Right. So, uh, right. So again, why? Why? How is he saying it's a spiritual sequel when well, well, he didn't even wasn't even involved in the second one? Fuck him. Uh, Which is kind of so, weird because the movies were only months apart. How did he not get that gig? Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe he was busy doing something else. Creative differences. <laughs> I doubt. I doubt it because he didn't rap it. I mean, now and so it's the same theme basically: inner city youth uh, um, with their 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 wacky urban uh artistic outlets except right. now instead of dancing it's it's rapping or singing uh, in stilted uh rhymes 
And uh, we have a research. Uh, Mario Van Peebles is the star of the film, mm-hmm. who uh, was recently featured in our review of The Exterminator 2, which was uh, three or four episodes back, I believe. Yeah. And so, but only a uh, year removed from this film. Right, so we've been kind of stuck in the 80s, and we've been kind of stuck with the same type of low-budget... Actually, we've been stuck on canon films, basically. Yeah, yeah. We've been doing this canon kick. It's not our fault. <laughs> well, it is, because we... And I'm, not, and I'm not challenging you, <laughs> challenge you, uh, challenging you to, uh, like, missing in action or any of... It's not even a canon film, what I'm challenging oh, you to. See, stop talking about it. We'll just do that later. You're, 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 you're trailing off here. I'm not... You're 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 ruining it for me. Just just surprise I'm me at the end. Surprise you at the end. You're ruining it for me. <laughs> you ruined it. I wanted now, to get you this tie, and before it got ruined in the rain. So, <laughs> so this film has a lot of links to the previous films we've watched: Canon Films, Mero Van Peebles, yes. uh, um, Inner City, uh, Arch Arch Sure, uh, gangs. I gangs. Mean, uh, dance gangs again. Gang. again? Jeez. Dance. Although this, now, one thing I want, this rapping, if you watch all three films, there is a progression from break to break to to rapping. Now, rapping is, uh, I think, the most realistic of the three films. That's not saying much. No. When they're not rapping, it is the most realistic. I, I, I think, I, I don't know if it's because it's uh, on... It's on the now. Uh, Breaking was on the east, co- on the west coast, correct? Uh, br- I, I, both, I believe both Breaking and Breaking Two were both California. No, they're on the east coast. Uh, yeah, no, they were California, right? That's what they're I thought. California yeah. based, yeah. Yeah. So Rappin is on the east coast. It was filmed in Pittsburgh, Whereas and it just the Exterminator films are east coast. Correct. I'm thinking Breaking, Breaking, and Breaking. No, two. I know, but if, if you look yeah. at canon as a whole. They they mm-hmm. either went one coast or the other. They they kind of didn't do anything in the in between. Exterminator two was Exterminator two was both coasts because they filmed it in New York and then they did reshoots in California. It, that is true, but uh, but as right. far as like the actual set piece, like where the film takes place, it's entirely right. New York. Right, but I mean, it's just as far, some the location kind of depends how the film feels, and so Rappin does have a more authentic feel to it. Um, also. I, we talked about how Breakin' and Breakin' 2, Breakin' was strictly a class separation. Uh, it only hinted at the, the racial divide, right. uh, which was still fairly strong in the 80s. Uh, in, the ni- in, in Breakin' 2, they played, uh, they brought, the class thing was in there, but they brought in the wealthy people as the bad guys. So you had the whole um, division of wealth, you had the Reaganomics, uh, which is actually mentioned in Rappin'. They mentioned Reagan. They are Reagan's president. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, they they start mentioning the whole uh, racial divide a bit further, especially during the dinner scene when the father's a, I know you want mo- I know what you people do with money. You squander it. You don't save it. You spend it on clothing and fancy cars. You know, it's it's like, drugs. Like, like, like yeah, and drugs. Like the you people <laughs> comes out in in part two. Yeah. Now now in rapping the racial thing is pretty much. Uh, it's not it's not New Jack City or do the right thing, but the racial component is now fully recognized. Uh, and yeah. the, but not only uh, the division of, of the racism that is inherent in the system, but also at the same time trying to impress the on the diversity of the community from which uh, Mary Van Peebles character, John Hood, aka Rappin' Hood <laughs> <laughs> can, we you don't hear that enough throughout the film. No. Uh so that really plays an important part, and the rich people are still evil, but they drag the politics into it as well. How the politicians and the you know even the local government doesn't aid the uh, the inner city people, the poor people, and uh, I, I think there's a self awareness to it where, okay, it's a typical situation where you know your your main hero and the majority of his friends are black. They live in um, a you know predominantly black area, uh, poor area, and then so the evil guy is the rich white guy who wants to demolish it, but. There's more attention to the uh, and there's uh, and there's the evil white gang member who used to be a former member of uh, Rap and Hood's gang. That's so right. So you have the you have the evil white guys, but at the same co- time you have white people and other ethnicities living in the same neighborhood that he stands up for, and you also have your uh, I guess you could call him the Uncle Tom, the 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 uh, the black That's right. guy. The, the, yeah, the yeah he's uh, the black wormy guy. 
uh, who tries to, well, he's told to, but he doesn't mind doing it either. He's pushing he's, everyone out of the neighborhood so that they could develop in that area. Yeah, he's the landlord and he's a lackey for this de- developer. I mean, the main plot is, uh, well, the, the main the, the the main character plot is is Rapid Hood gets out of jail for a crime we're not fully explained. Uh, we're not re- fully let in on him why he's in jail. The, the only alludes- thing, yeah, the only thing he allu- you're right. He alludes to hurting someone real bad. Well, That's what when he says, yeah, and, he, and the implication is that he killed somebody in a fight. Right. But I also had the feeling that he, he that the implication was that happened in jail. I was confused by that dialogue. That's it, right. I, that, because when uh, she goes, well, how come you didn't hit him? And he said, you know, I did a lot of time, a lot of thinking, and. Yeah, and then he goes on to say that uh, you know I hurt him, I hurt someone real bad, and it, it, you're right. And, it, the way he says him, it, and hurt him permanently, right? And the way he says it, and the, you're right, the, uh, it sounds like he did it in prison, right? But that might just be the fault of the writers not being clear on that. I'm not sure. Uh, so the impl- but the implication is he's kind of changed his ways. He's trying to, trying to avoid violence, that kind of stuff. Uh, but he's he's a he's right. a, a you know well, a reformed and, and, hoodlum. And, and not to fast forward too much, but there is a scene that happens where he has the option to kill somebody, and he decides not to. So it Which, almost that scene almost makes it like he's capable, but he decided not to because he was the stronger person. Now, X would have cut him. Of course he would have. X. I, li- I like his little up. brother in that scene. Kill him. Kill him. <laughs> <laughs> Just the way he's looking, he's looking at him with his grandmother to the side. Kill him. <laughs> Do it. Kill him. I mean, and I mean, mentioning the little brother, you've got a lot of that. Um, that want to see the blood. <laughs> you like, you wow. see a lot of the 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 um, the dynamics, the, the character dynamics, and the, the real life situations that are brought to light in exploitation cinema, leading into uh, you know urban cinema. Like Spike Lee stuff, et cetera, where you're you're dealing with the whole idea of okay, you know, here's you know the, the older brother who's done time, who's trying to mend his ways at the same time as younger brothers following the, down the same path, and how do you stop it against the culture of that, especially when you're in an oppressed environment where you know not, you, you, you know your landlords are trying to starve you out of your apartments and and the cops just come around and harass you. Now, although. It's like when we first see Rappin Hood, uh, uh, I keep calling him that, and he comes into town and he's like, he's coming to town and like seeing everybody and everybody's like, oh, there's that shady guy again. Uh, he, he meets the, the, uh, the black gentleman. What's his name? The, the, the Uncle Tom guy. Oh, um. I totally forget. Cedric? I don't know. Ce- it was Cedric. Was it, it Cedric? was Cedric. When he first meets him, he walks up to his shiny new red car and starts beating on it, like playing while, he, while he's singing or whatever. And right. he comes up and gets mad at him, and they kind of like face off. It's like, wait a minute, you're you're beating on the guy's car. That's a, that's a legitimate beef. I'm I'm with him, Mister Rappin Hood. What? <laughs> and then later on, after after like their whole uh, welcome back party, where uh, the the evil white guy, uh, oh, uh, the bank, Dwayne. The banker. Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 Not him. The, the street guy. This his former. Uh, oh yeah, Dwayne. How did Dwayne? How did he get a name Dwayne. like? Well, I mean, they wrote that in there, but did they try and make him a tough guy with an untough name to prove a point? Is that what they were trying to do? I I, I think it was a white name. I, I think well, because there you have there is that obvious divide here, where uh, Rapido comes back to town, and so he's got his old gang. That greets him with uh, a whip that we never see again. Right. I, I, I love how they I love how they dress all the yeah I know. <laughs> he's walking down the street. He's walking down the street, and then you just see, like you just see like uh, the the guy the black doctor from ER. Right, Eric with LaSalle, a, with a, and also Eric coming LaSalle. to America. Coming to America, yeah. just just out of nowhere with a bullwhip, and then there's this whole like uh, West a rapping story battle. That you saw. Yeah, a rapping battle with West Side Story, kind of familiarity to it. And at the end, it's like, oh, haha, we're actually friends. And this was just our awkward way of greeting each other by pretending the street fight. Uh, and then they throw a party that night. And then that night, they bump into Dwayne, who used to be a part of the crew, but he's branched off and formed his own gang now. Right. Uh, I, I don't know if he, he gave it a name. Did he give them a name? I don't think I they don't... had a name. Now, the. the 
the name Wild Thing kept popping up. Was that the name of Mario Van Peebles Gang, Wild Things? Well, you know what's interesting about that? It's also in the Ice T song uh, that they use for the trailer. I so I think either he's the Wild Thing or the gang was the Wild Things. Probably because it's on the bath, yeah. it's on the stall in the bathroom where he kicks the yeah. door in, and the guy's like, "I'm trying to do something in here." But it's even like, that wasn't 100 percent really? clear. Yeah, at least. So not the guy doing it. I mean, the wild thing being the brand name. Or he of the... said, "I got something going on in here." Almost like yeah. he had like a woman in there, but it was he was by himself. Hey, hey! Sometimes you need some time alone. Okay, go home. But but <laughs> so Dwayne is split off and formed his own gang, which is the opposite of uh, Mario Van Peebles or Rapid Hood's gang, where Rapid Hood's gang right. is uh, mostly black with one like Latino, I think, or half Latino. Uh, Dwayne's gang is all white except for uh, one or two. Uh, black individuals so it, there's kind of like that photo negative of the gang and also Dwayne is uh um uh he likes to slap his girlfriend around yeah and he Which likes is, to uh order her around just, literally like a dog <laughs> dixie come here come no subtly yeah no subtly <laughs> go get give me a beer <laughs> whoa oh no no i like it later when he's on the street and he's literally yelling at her dixie dixie come here come it's like, wow. <laughs> okay, here's your motivation. Talk to her like your dog. And he just took that literally. Yeah, it, but, um, Jeez. Um, like, right now, one of the best songs in the film, Snack Attack. Oh. <laughs> now, what I even like is the fact that Mary Van Peebles is rapping Hood, but all of his rapping is Ice-T voicing over. His... He should be ashamed of himself at how bad of a rapper he is. Apparently he it's, is because they have to have apparently, apparently being in. black, it's a birthright that you should know how to rap. And it's amazing how many people cannot rap in this film. There's nobody in this film that raps well at all. Well I don't like the I don't like that type of music personally. I, uh, but I will say that the stuff that's come out in the last couple of decades is very, very polished. It's very, some of it's very catchy. Well, this is just pure shit. All right. Well, for, uh, two things. One, nothing what? in the eighties was polished, so we can give them a little slack for that. Two, uh, when it comes to break dancing and rap singing, uh -huh. uh, between both of those, I do not know enough or enjoy enough of either of those to be a critic in any way. Just as I can't watch Breaking and go, yeah, he's doing that all wrong. I really can't listen to the <laughs> rapping and in, 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 in rapping and say, say yeah, yeah you know, that, that's kind of weak. That's weak rapping. I, I'm t I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I know enough to know that it's the worst rapping I, I've ever heard. I, I hesitate to, to make that. I do think it's funny that Mero Van Peebles is uh, being voiced over by Ice-T for all his rapping. They could have just got an actor that could, could rap it makes me wonder if Van Peebles is like toned are up you, or something. Are you sure that it's in the trivia and you listen to that him singing? That's not him singing. Because Ice T's voice is very distinct. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't if hear you that in, it, in any. I have to. I heard. I thought it was blatant. I thought. Well, it was listen, blatant. Ice T's yes, voice and his rapping is very distinct. Yes. I, I don't know if that's true. It's well. It, 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 it's I, in the I trivia. Read it I read you it did, somewhere. You did read it somewhere. Doesn't mean it's fucking so. Uh, I, I, I'm listening to it. That's Ice T. Like, you just said you do not have the authority to 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 criticize the artistic merit of it, not to identify a voice. And you can he's changing it a little bit because he's not supposed to be himself. But you, but like especially the first when he first starts rapping to his his uh, grandmother with his yeah. brother, you you listen to it. That's Ice T. <laughs> not, um, not not a. Not a if, they just if, showed... I had not, if I had not read the fact, I'd be like, that's Ice-T singing. <laughs> okay. I'll have to, I'll have to listen, really listen. I didn't think it sounded anything like Ice-T. Uh, they just had a scene where the little girl and the mother, uh, they're talking about how cold it is and they don't have heat. Mm -hmm. I love how they dress everyone, or I love how they dress white people in this movie. How they so? look like they came right out of a Christmas carol. Did you notice that? Like with the way they have the scarves and the jackets and they're all tattered and it just, it doesn't look like anything anyone would wear in the 80s. 
Well, I, I think also the lot, most of the neighbors, the stereo, the the um, ethnic, different diverse ethnicities of yeah. the neighbors. I think they are all dressed very stereotypically as well. The hot oh. dog vendor, oh, the yeah. Chinese uh, grocer, the uh, Greek uh, store owner. I think it was. They all dress like. No, he was like, Italian, unfortunately. I thought no, there was there was more than one though. There was Italian. I think oh, there was, was there a Greek. Was, yeah. was there a Greek one? Yeah, because at the end he he raps about like Rome or something like that, which would make that, him Roman. But no, but I think he's Greek. Rome uh, is in Italy. What? Rome is in Italy. There was a Greek one too because he mentioned Zeus. <laughs> there. He mentioned. I think the Zeus. I think the hot dog guy was Greek because he mentioned <laughs> one of them sings about Zeus. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's the hot dog guy may be Greek, but let's right. let's be clear that Rome is in Italy. Are you sure about that? I'm pretty sure about that. I think I read that somewhere. I I, I don't know. <laughs> I might have looked do. on a map one time and saw it too. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't use those. It's only um, the goddamn capital. Yeah, yeah, Scott, buy a <laughs> fucking globe and shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I would never so, say that. That's insulting. So, so I'm I'm agreeing with you. I think like uh, the white the, the white family, uh, the Chinese, the 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 Roman, the uh-huh. Greek guy, uh, <laughs> like the Italian, they're all. They're, they're all dressed very stereotypically, so yeah, you're right. They uh, they just put them, but then again, they're all they're they're putting them in blankets because they're supposed to be freezing because the, well, the yeah. landlord stopped delivering oil, which I'm pretty sure is against the law. But then again, in the 80s, I don't know how. Uh, oh. Again, we are talking like you said Reagan era, so Reagan I'm not sure president. how strict. The, yeah, and and uh, uh, one <laughs> I thing just, I did want to point out. The only thing the, I just what, kept thinking of when they were is just the Christmas Carol. It's like I've seen these type. This this style of well, yeah. clothes before, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I just thought it was weird. I, well, it, it, they're, they're just going. They're really just dressing them the way they want them to look. The street gangs are all dressed. You know, come on, they got the bandanas on, it's and like, and they don't they don't actually come out and say that it's set in uh, Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. But it's it's plastered everywhere in the film. Sure, you know, it's just everywhere. So I I don't know if that's if they couldn't just come out and say it, but they could have, uh, you know, background like logos and pictures right. and things of what to kind of say, okay, this is Pittsburgh. But, um, oh, God, this is that scene where I guess it's supposed to be the Jackson, like the Jackson 5, just like kids singing. I, I was very uncomfortable watching this film. There are a lot of scenes that are just very... The singing is so bad. All right, we lost Scott again. The singing is so bad in this film that it's uncomfortable to watch. Douche chills. Douche chills to the 10th degree. We'll wait for Scott to call me back. Um, all, all of the singing is that way. All of the rapping is that way. Um, I don't think we have enough to go on like what we did with Breakin' and Breakin' 2. Here, let's call Scott again. I'd rather. I don't hey the there. fuck is. I don't know what is with my internet tonight, but motherfucker. It's okay. Uh, I was just actually going on to say that uh, because of the amount of singing and rapping that's in this film, I don't think that there is enough to cut out like what we did with Breakin' and Breakin' Two, where we cut no. out all all the Breakin'. There isn't enough to do that in this. There's really um, not now. And. Be, uh, b- due to that, um, what you really end up with, like when we did it with Breakin' and Breakin' 2, when you cut out all the breakdancing, all the breaking, you're left with a film that feels out of place and actually becomes more funny because of it. Because even though it's seamlessly cut, it's like, it feels like there should be like a dance scene here or something. Uh, with this, you can't do that. So I was basically going on to say that there's a lot, this film made me uncomfortable quite a bit during the film because of how bad all of the the sing douche chills getting a lot of douche chills during this film okay um why why are you okaying me there there are there are you've heard the term right yeah okay Okay, Uh, you just said it yeah um (laughs) (laughs) there, there are i mean you've got the main plot with uh the main character plot like i said before with rapid hood coming back to the uh the hood, yeah, I'm calling it the hood, yes, and uh, trying to help okay. the community, help his friends, 
Uh, and you've got the side plot with the, the former gang member who started his own gang, so there's a, there's a clash there. Add to that the uh, plot, the lover's triangle plot complication of the girl that both the gang leaders have the hots for, uh, one of them being abusive towards the other one actually treating like a human being. Guess which way that goes. And <laughs> then on top of that, you have the evil white man uh, developer trying to get everybody out of the neighborhood, which is a pretty shitty neighborhood to begin with. So I don't, I don't, I don't see, I mean, I think if they just offered everybody like, like 5,000 a piece to move out, they would have done it with, in, a, in a blink of an eye. I don't, I don't think anybody's squatting because they have fond memories of, of the, uh, the shithole they live in. Uh, and it's really, I mean, they're living in the basement and shit. For really, if, they, if, if they had walked out there with cash, they would have, that place would have been gone in a week. It was totally, oh, let's try to starve them out. How about just paying them? How, how much does the deal worth for you, idiot? Uh, but then that's the, you know, there's there's the white man for you not taking the straight line. Um, yeah, the Greek guy's name was Stavros. Stavros. I told you there was a Greek guy. Yeah, yeah. And um, right. right next to Rome. <laughs> yeah. And... Um, so you've got that plot line as well. So there's a lot going on in the film as far as story goes. There, it is, and and there's a character, there's a whole character development thing with R- Rapid Hood. He's trying to figure out who he is or what he wants. Uh, he's very resistant to the idea of actually working or earning anything in his life. He'd rather just get his friends fired from the grocery store and steal food on the way out. Um, oh yeah. I I think the, the the one key part of this film is that if you take the Dwayne character, the uh, yeah the white former gang member that starts his own gang. Uh-huh. It really is the the origin story of Ice T. Not Ice T, god damn it, Vanilla Ice. V- it's the vanilla this movie is the Vanilla Ice origin story. Vanilla Ice. Vanilla Ice, that's what I said. <laughs> okay. Really? Think don't so? you think so? I don't <laughs> At the end, he even starts rapping a bit. It's like, oh, yeah, see, Rapid Hood inspired Vanilla Ice. Now he's off to do his own thing. I guess so. And you could tell he genuinely didn't want to do that rap either. Because at the end, he was like, all right, man, I'll see you later. It's like, what? <laughs> like they put the country twang in the background. No, that's not stereotypical at all. I'm glad we're keeping everything on this up and up here. What's Charles uh, Grant been up to? Nothing. Actually, nothing, right? Nothing. Actually, he, he was in the one film... Uh, I, the only other thing he did that was like any kind of like recognition at all that I was going to, uh, challenge you to and fucking IMDB can suck my balls. I swear to Christ, because I don't know what's going on, but if I try to back page, uh, IMDB. Oh, I had the same thing. You got an about blank page, right? They, all the advertising and shit, they're, they're pouring into this fucking site. You can't back page anymore. I don't know if it's because I'm on Chrome. Uh, I, I'm having the same problem. I get about I blank pages. It just times out. Yeah, fu- yeah, because they got to they got to shoot fucking ABC trailers and have uh, videos going. Just nonstop fucking advertising. Can I just like read the movie facts? I don't know how much more they have to advertise films. They're a site about fucking movies. I know. How much more? Do, on top of that, I have to have like advertising. Oh, Fifty Shades of Grey is coming out for Valentine's Day. That's great. I'm trying to read about Rambo. What the fuck? Yeah, what a joke it, that it, is. Yeah. At least, uh, oh, we can get into that later. But the, anyway, the other film he did, I just wanted to confirm the date, 1986. Right after that, he did the Delta Force. Yeah, with uh, Lee and, uh, Marvin. Right, and anything, everything after that is just okay. I don't, you know, he did some TV shows, Saved by the Bell, did, the College Years. Oh, did I, I can Bold chuck. and Beautiful. Yeah, nothing. He did nothing. Uh, he's, he, you know, TV shows, whatever. Uh, he was in an episode of Renegade. There you go. Uh, but <laughs> the the. Oh, and also Witchcraft, which I vaguely remember from the late 80s. The horror yeah. film. Yeah, 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 But that's that's pretty much it. So uh, if, if we had, if I was giving the challenge to you, I would have challenged you to the Delta Force. That's, oh, really? Yeah. Chuck that's Norris? Not, that's not what I'm challenging you to. I know you aren't. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I, that was like the one thing. I was like, if actually it was a tie between that and The Last Dragon because his, Rapid Hood's brother is the kid yeah. from The Last Dragon. Right, and... Um... His real name is Leo O'Brien, and that is my movie challenge to you. The Last, the Last Dragon? Dragon? Yes, it is. Oh, why'd you tell me now? Oh, cause I, I ruined because it, you brought I? it up now. Do you fucking well, you could have waited. I'm, I'm going to sit waited. on that. How am I going to sit on that and make it genu- a genuine surprise? I can't. You could I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, dumb. you mentioned it before. You the, the, you no, it, you're going to play you, dumb. You ruined it. 
you know, the wife says, oh, at least you're not getting me a, you know, get, getting me a diamond ring. And you're going to say, oh, yeah, that's just your birthday present. Yeah, you, you guessed it. No, you you play dumb. Yeah, and then if her birthday up. was, you know, an hour later, maybe that would no, work. No, no, no. It works. It's just the opposite. The lo- longer the time is, the more you have to forget. I would have forgot. I don't know why you brought it up now. I thought we do. Listen. How long have we been doing the show? A long ass fucking time. Couple, we always bring up what you would have challenged. Here's a recommendation. Here's what I'm challenging you to. This is what I thought about challenging you to. At the end, or when we're done with the review, I are we done with the review? I I threw I threw you broke down the, the fourth wind. wall. <laughs> I, no, I didn't break down the fourth wall. That would be talking to our audience, which we do all the time, and it's, it's, it's audio for the most part, so it's not much of a wall. Uh-huh. It's it's that's for fictional stuff. That has no bearing on what we're doing. I threw I I, I threw protocol out the window, yeah. and I jumped the gun. That is true. You I have hijacked the, the episode. That's right. A little bit, not much, just a little. Enough. So, so now all we have to really go on is when we're done, we rate it, and talk about other stuff. Sure. Sure. Can can, can I can I mention one of my favorite parts of the film is when. Uh, can um, I guess? Rapping, what? Can I guess? Sure. Because it's one of my favorite parts in the film. I don't think it's the same one. But go ahead. Okay, it's probably not. Uh, and it's probably my favorite character in the film, too. I love his entire interaction, as brief and as small it, as it is, with the uh, the <laughs> the seedy electronic shop owner. You mean the fence? Yeah. The, f- the, the fence? He's a fence. Oh, that's a person, yeah. Okay. That's a person yes. who buys stolen goods and sells yes, them. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, I never heard that term. Hmm. You learn something new every you, day. You got you got to be shitting me. You've never I've heard ne- the term I've, fence. I've never heard fence. F e n c e. Yeah, it's a fence. No, I never heard the term. Wow. Okay. Hey. No, go ahead. I'm not. You're, you're a little I'm more well re- uh, read I'm just than me. Surprised? No, I'm just surprised. It's in. It's 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 like a basic plot point in a lot of crime movies that's the whole never mind go ahead oh that scene is on on now actually uh i just loved every interaction he had with him even though it was brief but he's like uh you can have it for 250 you just bought it for 75 and (laughs) 250 for this shit radio that came out of this shit car (laughs) you you saw that coming you saw the interaction coming like a mile away though too when he's like how much did you get for that okay and runs in okay here comes the haggling you you saw it coming uh if he went in with exactly the seven with the 75 dollars which he sold it for uh, or what he bought it for he still would have he still would have did that my 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 favorite scene before before the internet fucking quits on me again is uh it's not for any real reason except the weirdness of it is when he goes to when uh, Rappin Hood goes to confront Dwayne at his gang's uh, hideout, and uh-huh. he's sitting there and he's just playing with a deck of cards for no real reason, and he starts counting off the like he starts drawing an ace and a two, so he, like oh you know, god, uh, you know, yeah. one, you know, you're not I'm gonna fight you, two, this is my neighborhood, three, and the, when he draws, I just kept waiting for him to say, and is that your card? It's just another one of those douchey, uncomfortable scenes. It's just so bad. You know, when, so when, when, bad. When he, go, when he goes to leave, he said, John, he asked it, come on, pick a card. Just pick a card. Any card. <laughs> I, and I, I think Dwayne is the best line of the film when he's uh, when they start hara- – when uh, the Uncle Tom guy pays Dwayne and his gang to start harassing the neighborhood people to get them to move out, which right. uh, it only works if they tell, tell you – I don't know. I don't, I don't know. It's just weird. You think someone would call the cops, but uh, um, when he's harassing, I think it was. I think it was the. Uh, it wasn't. Yeah, the Chi- I think it was the Chinese uh, uh, vegetable stand guy. Uh, the one thing he says, he says, "I'm the reason you lock your doors at night." <laughs> I was like, "Wow, okay." I get a little dark there. I mean, yeah, you know, it's like with the cops. You know, they seem to rush every other time during the film. Like at the end, during the big fight, when it's all over, they rush there and they get out, and there's nothing going on because everyone is gone. I almost expected one of them to like kick at the dirt, <laughs> you know, and like walk away with his head down. It's like, man, well, we missed the fight. It, it's, it's the part of the film that I can't argue with as far as realism goes. When yeah. there's a when there's a a, a gang fight. 
the cops don't show up until it's too late. When yeah. there's people t- terrorizing the neighborhood, breaking windows and knocking shit over, the cops don't even come. Bunch of bunch of bunch of brothers walking down the street carrying boxes. Cop car pulls up. Are you guys grocery shopping? What the fuck? <laughs> I'm That's carrying right. a fucking box. <laughs> I, I, I I there's not there's not one part of me that is, you know is going to argue against that as being a reality. Yeah, not it happens every day. And uh, and also of course the evil white um, uh, developer. Uh, right. I'm not, what do you want me to do? Starve them out? Can you do that? How much would it cost? I have no doubt that actually comes up in conversations when they're trying to, <laughs> they're trying to clear areas for building I, shopping malls and shit. I love it when they steal the oil and the heat kicks back on and all their radiators look like they came from fucking outer oh, space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have to show that the radiators are on so they put the, the red lights behind them and they can grow red, red. So the kids go over like, Mom, Mom, there's heat. It's like, don't touch that. Your hand, your skin will melt off. What are you, crazy? I mean, it's not bad enough that they put it because it's obviously a steam... <laughs> It's oil, but it's it's producing steam. You can hear it go, well, and having, so, I mean, it could be an oil furnace, but heating the water, it could it, it could be both of those. Well, I'm just saying, it's steam is what's being produced. You can hear yeah. steam heat, yeah. and that's yeah. all I'm saying is it's not it's not enough that you have a an audio oh, uh, of of just the noise. It's like okay, there's heat, but you have to have that red light too. It was so fucking weird. <laughs> And it just, they did it like three or four times, three or four different scenes of people getting their heat and they're all glowing red. You're waiting for it to cut to a shot outside. Like the kid runs out on fires. Ah! The mother's face is melting off. Robin Hood, what have you done? Uh, too much to oil. <laughs> Sweet mercy of death. Fuck, what was I going to say before that? Uh, uh, you were talking about your favorite scene. No, I did. That oh, you were talking the, about the cops uh, it being the most real that they don't show up for a gang fight. They, they're too, oh, or they're too late for the gang fight. They don't show up at all, and they stop people. Oh yeah, uh, for no yeah, reason. Um, that I, I had somewhere I was going. I mean, but where I'm going now is uh, um, the ending of the of this of the, the part of the trilogy in Breakin. At the end, uh, they're, they're you know, which again we we talked about how lame the plot is for Breakin. Uh, okay. they're, they're, they're trying to audition and they won't let them audition. So they dance anyway. That's the big ending, uh, climax, so to speak. And two, they have a big dance off to raise money, uh, to save the building, the community center. Miracles. And it doesn't work. I mean, <laughs> I mean it doesn't work. The, 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 the rich father ends up bailing them out. Right. So in this one, they, they go to the, the town council meeting about the zoning meeting. And when they're about to hand all the rights over to the, the rich white guy, uh, you know, the hoodlums come up and they start rapping. And this is how this is how we sing on the street when we feel it and make it real. And then they start rapping and uh, and it turns everyone the, around. Yeah, out of out, out of all the films, the most unbelievable thing is that it actually works. And you have like the the older the 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 the, the fucking government officials that were ready to you know when the when the three people from the neighborhood go to complain about the uh, the landlord complain that the landlord is not heating the houses in the winter and, and the guys right. like, well I, you know I don't see anything he has rights too you know <laughs> my favorite part of that he says you you can come to the meeting and voice your never mind the fact that the guys breaking the fucking tenants laws which yeah. you know, pretty sure even the 80s they had them it's like well you you can come to the meeting and voice yourself voice your opinion as well he says yeah if we're still alive then like, well, and I'm th- and I'm thinking the next line should be well, there'll be more seats then. You know, it's it's <laughs> come if you're able. I mean, we, we can't force it's, you. To it's come. like I'm fully when they're wrapping their way into everyone's hearts. I'm fully expecting them to be billy clubbed out of the room, and it didn't happen. <laughs> and, and so th- this government official, this 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 just un- just un- inattentive, uncaring, cold, heartless government official who half an hour ago was telling these home you know renters. Uh, that yeah, you know, if if your landlord's not uh, supplying heat to your apartment building, I don't know what you expect me to do. Maybe it, maybe a mall's a solution to this. <laughs> and then <laughs> half an hour, he's like, "Can't stop. We won't stop. We'll keep on climbing till we hit the top." Yes, I I yeah. We no no zoning permits for the mall. This this rhythm has got me thinking of the truth to re- to, to to life. I'm singing the truth now. Yes, no, it doesn't happen. No, 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 no. Well, I mean, the government, the government siding for the community as a whole, local right. government siding on community for real, that rarely happens as it is, let alone them doing it in song or inspired by song. 
you would have just had an. A, it, I can't imagine that it's ever the, happened in real life, but the, there's too many the, people on this planet to think that it hasn't. You would the, just the, see the, an awkward silence after they're done with their rap. That's, they how, that's, they that's how it would really go. Thank you uh, for that. Um, we'll uh, we'll let you know on our decision. Some fucking glorified security guard would have maced him before he got the third verse on. Or, yeah. We can't stop. Won't stop. Gonna keep on my eyes. Ah. <laughs> Cue You're just Billy arrest. Club. Like, hit him. Yeah, yeah. Billy, a, a, a fucking Billy Club shampoo later. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> the the scene after that. Where Rapid Hood is, is walking down the street rapping, and all of his neighbors rap about how great he is. Uh, every, everybody he meets raps to agree with him. That's more realistic than the <laughs> the, the the whole local government meeting where they save the day oh, by rapping. Yeah. The the scene where he breaks up the two alcoholics fighting each other by rapping to them is more realistic than the yeah, idea of the government he, giving a shit. Where he pretty much gets a demo tape off of that. <laughs> That was amazing. You just made that up uh, right there on the spot? Yes, I did. Let's cut you a demo. I'll even pay you for it. I, really? You're the worst business. He goes, I must be a bad business. You are a bad businessman. You're a horrible business person. <laughs> you're horrible. It, 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 it's the one thing that you really, I mean, I guess they're, they're trying to make the, the rap and hood character noble. And like, so I was like, I, you know, I don't. I don't want money in this, you know. I don't know about greed. I'm about this and this. Yeah, you can still buy. You can still fucking, you know. Your your grandmother's living in a slum. Your grandmother's right. living in an apartment where they won't heat it because they don't want her there. Maybe you can make some money. And, and, yeah, and, and you ain't fucking end, helping by going to jail all the time. You fucking degenerate. And it's not like he has to like work <laughs> for it either. He just walks somewhere, sings, and all of a sudden this guy's like trying to throw money at him. So I'll pay you cash. Yeah, anything to make you happy. And at the end, he's like chasing after him with the with the contract. What can I do? Anything you want your grandmother to travel with you? Anything? Just and, and he has to get like everybody. The it, it's just so. Come on. Oh yeah. Come on. Uh, I mean, but again, what do you expect from? It's not the movie's not trying to be deep. I don't know if there's anything. I the only thing I can think of to save the film is if Vanilla Ice was the Dwayne character and. Uh, well, obviously, vanilla or vanilla ice are. I, for some reason, I just thought iced tea. For some reason, Mike, I don't know why and, I keep and, thinking. Um, because uh, iced tea and Mario Van Peebles, they work together on New Jack City. Uh, just a mere, what five years later. Well, it's, there you go. Yeah, and, and I think Mario Van Peebles should have reprised the role of X in this film. <laughs> I think it would have had more of an impact. Y- well, yeah. Yeah. Not more people that should have died would have died. <laughs> no, nobody died. Closest you got is some little girl with hypothermia. That's it. Oh, and that's and that's the other thing I wanted to say. After watching Breaking and Breaking Two with all these West Side Story, like you know, oh, we're gonna have a rap fight, and we're gonna no, we're gonna have a dance fight, we're gonna have a Breaking fight, and then part Breaking Two where they're they're having the Breaking fight, but they have like nunchucks and garbage can lids, but it's all just dancing choreographed shit, right. and all of a sudden rapping at the end. A real, a real fight breaks out. Right. And I, I got confused because I was like, wait, 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 wait. There's, aren't they supposed to be like dancing or why, they're supposed to be singing each other? How come he punched them? What the fuck? <laughs> That's not in the rules. Why is he kicking them? So, oh, it's a real fight. <laughs> I, I, it, after all these movies, it just it, I couldn't wrap my head around people actually physically altercating. It was like, shouldn't you guys should be you know expressing this in some kind of uh, you know free form artistic expression? What's with the knife? Yeah, he pulls that out, and he's like, yeah, he's going to fucking cut him. <laughs> yeah, he's going to try and stab him in the throat. That's what he's going to try and do. No, but he's not he going to start be... rapping. He's white. Well, he... Not going to happen. Yeah, but, but he, sh- he should be rapping while he's doing that. Like, that's the rules. I mean, they, they set the rules up in the beginning with the bullwhip. If which this I don't was know a why... true sequel, that's how it would have went down. If it was a true sequel, true sequel, there'd be breakdancing involved. Well, this, this is in true. In some way. Um, and how, where the hell was his, was the bullwhip at the in the end fight scene? He's got it at the beginning when he's horsing around. A real fight, a real a real rumble breaks out, and you don't have your bullwhip on you. What kind he's of used, gang? Well, you know, he's using you gotta, that for other things. No, 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 no. Sure. Uh, yeah, Ma- Maple Thorpe, I got you. <laughs> you got me. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
<sighs> I don't have much else to say about Rapid. I think I no. I think challenging this was kind of um, pushing the limit. I think I, breaking breaking yeah. two together, which we hadn't. I mean, the challenge was just breaking two, but we ended up doing both. I think between those two, and with still remnants of Mario from Exterminator two, uh, too much too much 80s exploitation bad cinema in a row we've done five in a row with rapping right yeah and uh six if you count wild thing right it's just as far as like a gang thing well i mean as far as like 80s exploitation wild thing's not quite exploitation so let's say no uh yeah so if the last five films have just been this and I, it's a little draining i sh- we should have i sh- i should have broken it up i shouldn't have gone right to rapping but it was such an opportune time to go from breaking so... to rap so we should go ahead and rate this then. Yeah. 3.3 uh, 3 on IMDb. I think that's actually pretty accurate. Hang on. I can't back page. So I have to type rapid in again in IMDb because uh, IMDb is a Yeah. Look, fucking... right now I'm looking at a full and, you know, I have a decent sized monitor. I know yours is even bigger, but it's the entire fucking background of Twix. Really? That, I, that's I, the got... advertisement I'm looking at right now. I got M- Amazon Prime advertisement. Ugh. Yeah, I'm gonna refresh. Uh, it, any, see what anyway, it does. Uh, three point three stars. I'm happy with three. How about you? Oh yeah, absolutely. Done. done. Already let's done. Go, let's go ahead and end this shit. I'm just so tired of it. Should, I'm not should, tired of should, the show. I'm just tired of YouTube. I love the show. I love doing the should, show every week. You should wrap. You should wrap all the stuff. That's not happening. You should. You can only catch if you, us only, on only YouTube. If, only if, oh. Go to iTunes. Way That's too douchey. Way too douchey. <laughs> anyway, as Scott said, you can go to you. Uh, you can go to iTunes and you can download all of our shows there. You can review the shows as well. Give us some reviews. We appreciate all of that. You can go to our our website at moviesucktastic.com, which I may or not be redoing uh, sometime soon. Uh, you can listen to all the shows there. You can download them there, and you can watch the show live there. Or you can if go to live lack, stream. If you lack our app, you can download our app. Go to Google Play and download it today. Should have ended with that. <laughs> I don't know where to go with that. I, I was, uh, I was, I was, I, <laughs> or you can go to livestream.com slash moviesucktastic, and you can watch the show live there. You can actually watch... Some of our videos that are there because it posts there, but only for a short period of time before they take that shit down. Because they're dicks too. Yeah, they're just not immediately dicks. You know what? If uh, we did, if we did YouTube live, like stri- live streaming on YouTube, we'd probably have a better better shot with our videos staying up. Yeah, that's also uh, blocked because we're banned until August twentieth. <laughs> well, I mean, after we're banned. <laughs> I know. Um, it's possible if. if if their utilities are, even though we have issues with live stream, it's 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 a really good software. It's really well done, you know. But if YouTube's is half as good, I'm willing to switch. So anyway, uh, you can go to our Tumblr page at moviesucktastic.tumblr.com. You can also go to our Facebook page at facebook.com/moviesucktastic. You can email us. The movie guys at moviesucktastic.com. You at can the movie also guys at moviesucktastic.com. It's not at. I gotta say it differently. It's gotta be worded differently because <laughs> it's not at the movie guys. Because there's no at simple. You know what they I mean. Know, the movie guys at moviesucktastic.com. You can leave us voicemail at 908-514-4470. And as Scott rapped before, please don't forget to download our app. Everything that I just talked about is actually in the app, and it makes taking the show. Uh, anywhere you go, super easy. So get the app. Hear my rap. Here we go. Google Play. Do it today. <laughs> Movie Sucktastic. I had nothing that rhymes with that. And that's still infinitely better than any of the rap that we saw in the film Rapping. So congratulate yourself. <laughs> All right, everybody. Good. Yeah, we'll talk to you next week. Later, Joey G. You know what's ironic? People used to call me Joey G, but I believe I'm, not, it. I'm not going there now. <laughs> and just remember, 
I'm the reason yeah. you lock your doors at night. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Later. Huh? <laughs>